Shalom, brothers and sisters. So <clears throat> we are watching the world around us devolve into chaos as it gets ready for that 11th cycle of chaos, confusion, disorder, which will show what it's going to be like in the tribulation period, final week of Daniel. And we know that lying ahead is the Gog Magog war at some stage as well. And we know who the players are in this war, thanks to the word of God laying it out for us nation by nation and what the ancient nation names were connected to the modern nation names and i've done a couple of videos on this connecting all those dots for you so you know who is in these alliances and we know now that all of those who are in this gog magog alliance are aligned today together two of the major players three for me is turkey iran and russia those are three big players within that alliance and two at the moment <clears throat> are very actively showing the world that they are together so there's two articles that came out recently that show you just how close everything is to that Gog Magog war against Israel when the hook is put in the jaw and they are pulled to come and take a spoil and God Almighty deals with them himself. The first article says Russia-Iran treaty includes a military pact that threatens Israel. Now we know that recently Russia and North Korea signed and finalized a military pact to come to each other's aid if they ever need to do so militarily so they are now joined that is in fact already in place now russia is doing that exact same thing with iran publicly it wouldn't surprise me if this pact is already in place and has been for a while but they are making sure the world knows as a form of deterrence that watch out when you attack Iran, we reserve the right to jump in and defend them as well. So you are ipto facto attacking Russia. Uh, the comprehensive treaty between Iran and Russia will include military cooperation and may pose a threat to Israel. May pose, will pose a threat to Israel. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Thursday last week that the treaty on a comprehensive strategic partnership between Russia and Iran is being prepared and will become a serious factor in strengthening Russian-Iranian relations. The agreement, according to Lavrov, is expected to be signed in the very near future. Russia has said it expects Iran's president, Masoud Pezeskian, to visit Moscow in the coming months now, in 2024. It will confirm the party's desire for closer cooperation in the field of defense and interaction in the interests of peace and security at the regional and global levels according to lavrov when they say peace and security sudden destruction shall come upon them russia is seeking to consolidate its alliances with other anti-western authoritarian countries such as iran and north korea now north korea is obviously done and dusted in the bag signed processed multiple copies and we've got north korean troops in ukraine in Russian military uniform with weaponry getting ready to deploy onto the battlefield. We'll touch on that in a separate video. So we see that treaty already playing out. And now the, the rest are trying to think, do we do something to North Korea? Because then Russia will deploy to North Korea. And they've got the assets to do exactly that. All these players are important in their positioning for the war that's lying at the doors. Then this strange article pops out of nowhere. Now Russia and Israel have not been chatting or friends for a while. There was a time back in the day when Netanyahu would pop over to Moscow and Putin would chat to them and they seemed like best buddies. That ship has sailed long time ago and there is an obvious animosity between the two now. For the first time in ages, a Russian plane landed in Israel for possible mediation effort with Iran. This is what they're thinking it was about. The Russian aircraft landed in Israel on Thursday afternoon and later headed back to Moscow for reasons that are not clear. Israeli officials aren't openly talking about it. Russia's not openly talking about it, which tells you it was an important meeting. The not so important stuff anybody's willing to talk about globally and out there and in the open, but the really important stuff, the Antichrist background stuff, the preparation for the big stuff, that's generally kept quiet from the masses. Officials denied reports that the Russian delegation arrived in the country to negotiate the release of two Israeli-Russian captives held by Hamas, Alexander Sasha Trufanov and Maxim Harkin. 
Hamas Deputy Politburo Head Musa Abu Marzouk visited Moscow on the same day and spoke with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bordanov about the release. The Russian arrival in Israel raised several questions. Why did a Russian plane connected to Russian President Vladimir Putin arrive? It's not just a Russian plane, it's a plane connected to Putin. Was its arrival related to the delivery of messages from Israel to Iran via Russia? Or was it an attempt by Putin to mediate between Israel and Iran? Maybe as part of this whole process where they're connected with their new treaty and now they're trying to connect the pieces here between Iran and Israel. Did Russia convey Israel's messages to Iran clarifying that nuclear facilities would not be targeted but military sites would be and that Israel would retaliate harshly should Iran attack again. Israeli officials declined to comment on the plane's landing, leaving answers unclear, which again tells you it was an important meeting. The report added, now this is interesting, the report added that Hezbollah temporarily halted all rocket fire into Israeli territory for several hours during the Russian plane's stay. So when the Russian plane was approaching, all of the proxies stopped shooting. It lands, it does its secretive meeting with Israel, gets back in the plane and leaves. That entire time, the skies are safe. Only when it's gone safely, does the rocket fire and everything intensify and continue as per normal. Something big went down in this meeting. I don't think this was just an everyday thing. This could be a warning to Israel from Russia, from Putin's office, saying directly, we are with Iran, we are with Turkey, we are with our allies, we are standing against you, watch yourself. It could be anything. It could be an attempt at mediation between Israel and Iran. Because ultimately, Israel can't take Iran out on her own right now. Iran plays a part in the Gog Magog war, which tells you already, regardless of what the experts are telling you, that they will still be around for a bit until the Gog Magog war kicks into high gear because they are part of that process. So there's a lot of interesting things that could have happened here. I don't think it was a negotiation for the Russian hostages because that's a whole side issue they could have discussed in Moscow at any other time, as mentioned with Hamas directly. This was a big meeting and we might never know what it was really about, but definitely worth keeping our eyes on as these two become a stronger and stronger alliance in the Middle East and the world playing field for what lies ahead. Everything lining up prophetically for these final moments of mankind as biblically warned. Tomorrow's news today. So God bless. Keep looking up. Keep spending time in the word and keep drawing closer to Jesus Christ all the time. Shalom.